Hi everyone, my name is Grant K, and welcome to this video series on how to use Action, Smoke's main 3D compositor. We're going to be starting off at the very beginning. We'll have a look at why we have Action and what it brings to the table. We'll also be examining the underlying concepts as to how Action works, and we'll also be having a look at why we work in Action in a certain way. In Autodesk Smoke, most of the workflow typically centers on the timeline. Now the timeline facilitates the editorial of any story, but it also has the added benefit of layer compositing. In other words, you can layer one image on top of another to create a finished result. So in a very quick statement, we've established that compositing can be done directly in the timeline. So what is the point of the Action Compositor? Well, there are two main reasons. Firstly, most timeline-based compositing is limited. You may have infinite layers that can be layered up to create a visual result. However, those layers never truly interact with each other. You can reorder the layers, but they exist totally independent from each other. Secondly, in today's modern pipelines, people are mixing all sorts of materials together to create composites. This can be flat imagery, 3D renders, and even actual 3D models with lighting and camera data. Now, timelines were originally built for storytelling and not advanced compositing. And this is what Action offers an infinite 3D environment where all forms of visual data, whether it be 2D or 3D, can coexist and interact with each other free from the constraints of the layered timeline. Now don't get me wrong, there is still plenty you can do in the timeline for everyday work, but Action opens up a whole new avenue with potential to push your work even further. Action is a desktop module. That means it's not available in the timeline. So the typical workflow with Action is to place your elements on the desktop, whether you have imported them or copied them from the timeline. You can then proceed to load the various sources into Action. Now Action has a few ways to get into it, and I will show you the easiest way if you are starting off. Click the Action button on the interface and you will get the blue pop-up button. Click on this and select None. This means that we can enter into Action and set up the composite settings and then start to bring in our media. The white cursor always indicates the destination result render once Action has processed. So just click anywhere on the desktop to enter into Action. Now that we're here, let's quickly examine the UI layout as well as some of the nuances of the interface. Your viewers occupy the top half of the screen and the controls are on the bottom half of the interface. To the left of the controls, you will always find the Setup button, the Animation button, Preview and Process. To the right of the controls, you will always find your keyframing tools, undo and redo, your navigation controls, as well as access to the grids and guides menu for your action and title safe guides. The additional UI tools that you need to be aware of are the swipe menus. The swipe menus are located to the left, right, and bottom of the screen. So if you accidentally swipe to the left, right, or bottom, the interface will change. To get back to where you were, simply swipe again in the same direction and the interface will return to the previous state. A very important pop-up button to remember is the cursor pop-up located to the right of the player controls. If you click and hold on the button, you will see that it contains a vast list of commands that can be assigned to the cursor. 
This includes transformations, keyframe tools, camera tools, and schematic tools. All of these functions will be used at some point, and it's always a good idea to know where to find them. You can also see that the commands have hotkeys assigned if you wish to familiarize yourself with them for faster interaction. Finally, I want to focus on the viewers and their modes. The viewers on the top half of the interface can be split into multiple viewers by pressing certain hotkeys. Alt 2, Alt 3, and Alt 4 will give you a four screen split. Alt 1 will give you a single view. The most common mode I find myself working in is the dual view split. Press the hotkeys Alt 2 to bring up the dual viewers. Now each viewer operates independently from each other. Whichever one is activated will be affected by the settings you change. All the viewer settings are controlled by the pop-up located at the bottom left of the interface. There are a lot of commands as you can see, and in the pop-up menu, each one will give you a different view of your composite. However, remember that the F4 hotkey is always your result view. This is the view that we mainly work with. All the other views also have hotkeys mapped, and you can learn them in your own time. As you have seen, we've started to examine the foundations where everything is, as well as prepare you for your action experience. In the next video, we'll be looking at loading media into action, how smoke deals with alpha channels and how that impacts on action, as well as the media list, auto image, and more. If you'd like to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke, or you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac. Thanks for watching and see you again in the next video.